Right, so if a, a method is declared in a class or interface with the same name but a different signature as an existing accessible method, it's said to be overloaded. That's what overloading means. Now, the existing method, of course, doesn't have to be in the same class or interface. It can be inherited. Now, um, obviously, because the the name is the same and the signature is different, it means that the argument types are different. Okay. Now, um, overloaded methods are treated as um, different methods, really, um, with absolutely no connection between them. Now, for methods um, and constructors as well, the compiler treats um, the signature as the important thing and not the name. If you want to identify a, a particular uh, a method, it, it goes by the signature. Okay, it's not just the name, you've got to have the name and the types. So um, it's best to regard two methods with the same name but different signatures as being different methods, because effectively they are. Um, you know, it's, it's free to throw or return whatever it wants. That's, that's quite different to being overridden. Uh, so long, of course, it doesn't conflict with any other requirements. Um, when you override a method, now the key thing there is that the signature must be the same. So, of course, um, uh, the method you're you are overriding must be in a superclass or super interface because you can't have you can't have two methods with the same signature in in a, a class or an interface so it's got to be in a, a superclass or super interface they can't be in the same one um, there, there are, of course there are other requirements as well you know the the return types have got to be compatible and the throws clause has got to be compatible and that sort of thing but the key thing is that the signature must be the same. When you overload, the signature must be different. When you override, the signature must be the same. Now, of course, there's nothing wrong with um, overriding an overloaded method by declaring a method with the same signature in, in some subclass or sub-interface. Okay? Nothing wrong at all with that. Now, um, all this is, is quite simple so far, I think, really difficult. Um, the problem comes when you call an overloaded method rather than when you declare it. Because when you call it, there can be a whole load of different methods which um, that call could, um, could be referring to. Um, a whole load of methods could be applicable to a particular call. So the, the problem then is working out which is the right one. And there's a, there's a method for doing that. Um, uh, the, the important thing is um, overloading, that's working out which one actually gets called, is something that the compiler does at compile time. Overriding is something which is sorted out at runtime. And that's where the difference is. Okay, So you get overloading sorted out first to work out which which method is to call, and if that method happens to be overridden, well, then that will be sorted out at runtime. Okay. All right. Here's our problem. Uh, we've got a call here to this method m, and um, it could turn out to be any one of these up here. And the problem is, which one is uh, chosen? Uh, this, by the way, uh, compiles. It's perfectly reasonable. Well, it compiles anyway. Um, and what happens is uh, this one up the top is the preferred method. And uh, the question is what happens if that one is not there? Well, if it's not there, what happens is you get a compiler error because it complains about um, uh, an ambiguous um, call because if that's not there, it will go for either that one or that one. The two that are labelled as two. And um, if you comment either of those out, it will go for the other one. 
So if uh, one's not there, I'll go for one of those. And if one and two are not there, then it'll complain again because it could be any of the ones that are left. And um, you might uh, wonder how it uh, goes about doing this. Um, in fact, uh, uh, it sorts them out into three categories. The first category are those that can be satisfied just by uh, subtyping. So this is an int. These are both ints, of course, and so that's satisfied because those are ints there. Not there, of course, because you can't go from int. Int is not a subtype of integer. And then uh, the next category it satisfies are those which uh, methods which it can reach by matching up the types by using subtyping and uh, boxing or unboxing. Uh, so that's those two. And the next are those that can be satisfied by um, subtyping boxing and unboxing or variable arity methods. So that's all the rest. So those are the three categories it sorts them into. And uh, that's how it works it out. You'll notice of course though that um, uh, this doesn't have to be the top priority method. If this was, uh, if that was those two parameters there were null, then uh, the top priority method to be called would be that one there with two integers because they will both take nulls so in that case it would go for that so notice that what gets called depends crucially on these ty the types of these parameters down here okay so now let's um, actually we won't with a lot of diversion first before we go into details about how the choice is made oh and um, I'll just mention uh, uh, calling a method is also known as method invocation, which is a big long word, so I tend to say calling instead. But um, it's method invocation. Okay.